So, welcome back, second episode of Lured In Podcast. We got myself, Noah, Jared, Crafty, and Garrett all joining us today. Um, today we're gonna be talking about regulations, um, fishing regulations, pan fish, and then into some more axe regs for this year, and also touch on uh, Lake of the Woods and maybe Red Lake too. But uh, before we get into that. I want to thank uh, Iron Range Custom Rods, the, the rod, ice fishing rods we we use. I know we're uh, wrapping up ice season, but um, they're super, super quality. We wouldn't use them if they weren't quality and we're, we didn't believe in them. Um, but they're at a much affordable cost compared to the other top of the line, which we compare them to the top of the line on the, on the market. But uh, let's get into today's episode, talking about regulations. And we'll start it off on panfish, because I have a strong belief in certain panfish regulations that need to be changed in the state of Minnesota. This is just my opinion. I might start getting on other people's nerves for saying what I'm going to say, but um, I believe there should be more strict rules on panfish regulation, specifically uh, bluegills and crappies. Um, do any of you guys kind of agree with me? I do. I have certain opinions about each. Okay. We'll get into those opinions here. I just want to see if anyone agrees that maybe these rules are uh, how they are, should, are fine, or, or should we kind of change what they're at today? Because today, um, in the state of Minnesota, you can keep 10 crappies per person year-round, and bluegills, I'm going to get this wrong, it's either 20 or 30 a person all year-round, and no size limit to any of them. I believe it's 20. I don't think it's 30. I believe it's 20. Two it used to be 30. Two. What's that, Crafty? Two possessions? No, and two one possession. possession. No, only one possession. One. Yeah, Minnesota's only one. Okay. But uh, do you guys... Do you think those are good and how they sit today, those those rules, or do you think it should be changed in any manner? I can start a little bit on my ideas about them. Um, I think they should be changed, uh, not because uh, – there's certain opinions I have on both. So I'll start with crappie fishing. Yeah, let's talk um, about crappie first, and then we'll talk about yep. bluegill after. So for crappie fishing, um, I believe that the – the slot size, there should be a slot on the size of crappies that you keep, um, along with the limit being dropped uh, from 10 to, let's say, six, five or six a person. I feel like that's enough to where if you were keeping five or six a person, that is plenty enough for a meal. And then my slot size would be uh, not keeping anything over 12 and a half inches. But except you're allowed to keep that, uh, one. that, that one trophy fish because uh, people enjoy mounting fish. Oh, excuse me. Instead of getting replicas, but we can talk about that. That's a whole that's, other conversation. That's a whole other conversation. Yeah, that's a whole yeah. different conversation there. But um, no, that's my opinion on it. I don't think you need to be uh, keeping crappies that are that big. I think those are your main breeding fish too. Uh, if any of you want to chime in on your thoughts on it. I mean, yeah, twelve and a half is probably a decent size. Um, I'm just trying to find it on the DNR website, but I thought it was two possessions. Uh, Minnesota's only one. North Dakota, you can have two possessions in. Minnesota, you can only have your daily. Okay. Um, yeah, I can see it too. I read, was reading on a couple of forums though that a lot of like regulations are based off of like a four person household. So like if you're only able to keep one limit of fish and feed four people, I mean, I could see it Where's that everybody way. Else fishing? I do think Minnesota should have two two possession limits too. Yeah, instead of just one. I'm gonna piggyback off that for a second. Um, because theoretically, so if you have a one possession limit, you're allowed to keep ten fish. Correct? Let's just say yeah. crop ten fish. Okay. So if we said, what about if we had the total number of copies you can keep per day cut down, but increase the number of possessions you could have? Do you think that would have a a drastic effect on this whole thing? Um, but my opinion on that, how many people do you know that actually follow the possession limit? That's one of the main concerns about the whole thing is because DNR people aren't running to everybody, everybody's house that has a boat in their yard asking to see their freezers. I mean, that just doesn't make any sense and is really just – you, you can't implement that. So no. I'm just curious if that weren't a problem, would it work? I don't know if you look at it like that because it kind of is a problem today in my eyes. 
I know I have my correct amount of fish in my freezer right now, but I'm living on my own, so I don't need to have a ton of fish in my freezer. But uh, I know there's a lot of people out there, and I'm thinking of people on Vermilion that have a lot of fish in their freezer because they can and they live on the lake. And I'm thinking of walleyes in this sense, you can keep four on Vermilion. They have 25 walleyes in their freezer because they go out fishing every night and they don't eat, it, eat fish every night. So. Okay, but to, but to kind of piggyback off that, like what if, so obviously there's families, what if everyone buys a fishing license, but there's only the one person going out and catching the fish? That's fine, because that's fine, because you still, the household still has fishing licenses to keep possession of those fish. As long as you're not bringing in eight fish if you're the only one fishing, you can bring in four. And then oh, yeah. And stuff like that. Well, I think well, on, that, on that lake specifically. But I for copies anyways, huh? I think a better solution would be to, instead of keeping the season continuous, having it kind of like the same as walleyes, is opener, opener fishing's opener for everything and not just walleyes. Yep. I mean, that's easier to regulate than how many fish people are catching, I think. Mm -hmm. Well, another thing, Noah and, I, Noah and I kind of discussed this topic a little bit last night. I was fired up. And, and one thing we kind of thought of is, okay, don't cut the season because now, you, now you're eliminating fishing for people. But make it catch and release. Why, why can't we do something like that? Especially springtime copy. So I'll just talk about my whole opinion on copy. Here, com here comes Noah's rant. Here we go. It's coming my rant. I was holding off for a little bit. Here it is. Some words in. So copy is in my mind. Right now it's 10, 10 a person, no size limit, um, daily possession, anytime you're around. And I'm just going to cut to the chase on what I think it should be. I think it should be six to eight a person. I haven't decided on six or eight or seven, but I don't think seven's a weird number. Um, there's, I agree with Jared on 12 and a half should be your, your size limit and then one over. Although I don't believe in, I still, I like replica fish better than, than your, your big trophy fish. And some people are still going to eat those 14 inch copies to each their own. Um, and then I think they should have a season for crappies, opener on the same as walleye opener, close on the same as walleye, walleye close. And the reason for that, and yes, we could, you can do catch and, catch and release on crappies in spring because they do are, are shallow. And that's the reason why I think um, you shouldn't be able to take crappies in, in April. Yes, I know. And because they're the only fish, one of the only fish you can target at that time of year. So that's all everyone's doing who likes to fish. I mean, there's, you're going to get your occasional summer goers that go only walleye fishing in the summer, but your, your core anglers are going to, target crappies in April because they're easy to target, you know where to find them, and they're easy to catch because they're feeding. And they're up, last year I pounded probably 60 crappies in one afternoon and I kept five because that's all I needed. Six, I think I kept. And I was catching them in two feet of water. I literally put an anchor on my boat, they were under my boat, 360 degrees around me and I'd pitch a jig out and I had one on almost every cast. And I'm thinking to myself, this is way too easy. And then after two, like, by two hours it passed by, I, there were a couple boats that pulled in, there were six boats there. And I'm like, this is ridiculous. I should have left after I had my first five, six fish, but it was too much fun. So just thinking on how many of those fish got taken out of there at 10 person limits when there's average of three guys in a boat, six boats there. What's that? 180 fish if everyone kept their, kept their limit. That's kind of a lot if you ask me. And they're all fish that are spawning, so they're ninety percent of them are females. Okay, so that brings up another quick topic. If you're going to do that, you should be able. You shouldn't be able to fish for spawning fish. Period. Then. If so catch and release, catch and release crappies in two feet of water. I, it is what it is. I, you're, they're going to survive every single time. Oh yeah, no, that's unless fine. they get a bad, unless they get a deep hook or something like that, and somebody doesn't cut their line, or, or some fluke thing happens. But if you catch a fish in two feet of water and you really say it's going to work, you so, hold it in the water for 10 minutes. Piggybacking off what Jared was talking about, how you, you were said, well, then we just shouldn't target spawning fish. I, I don't know if you're really going to be able to do that. Uh, like, just for example, walleyes. Walleyes tend to spawn a little bit later in the year, later than what crappies would mid-april i would say 
Yeah, yeah, typically, on typically, yeah, they do. It, it, uh, it all kind of depends on ice out and when the water starts warming up and all that stuff. Okay, so if it's a late ice out, okay, takes a little bit wa longer for the water to thaw, or, or not, excuse me, the ice to thaw out and the water temp to raise, okay? So then fishing opener comes around and nobody can fish walleyes because they're spawning. I think that's a little different. Because that's kind of a fluke year based on weather. Yeah, but I get where you're going. The, yeah, I see I what get, you mean. I just don't think not being able to catch spawning fish. I understand. Catching, catch and keep. I, no, I, no, yeah, catching and releasing, that's totally different. But catching and keeping, I just don't think that's realistic. Yeah, because you have like your area on Vermilion, and then you have our area that we fish up in canada and you can't fish those until later in the year so you have opener season then you have even later in the year when they're still spawning and you still can't fish that, it uh, like they figured out on those bigger lakes where those fish are going to spawn at. the and that vast majority hurt the wildlife but, population even more because okay just thinking uh the same example of late ice out okay southern states or southern lakes in the state of minnesota fall out they don't but, have ice on them right now than the northern ones. I mean, that's it's pretty, it's pretty obvious. Okay, so then if fishing opener comes around and you can't fish Lake Vermilion because they're all spawning walleyes, okay, well, where else can we go? They're going to go down south to all the lakes down there and overfish all those ones and then come back up. So, I mean, I just don't know if that's a really great idea to just not catch and release, or excuse me, not catch and keep spawning fish. And and I will I, I miss I misspoke on that. I that's what I was referring to was being able to only catch and release fish. I didn't mean not being able to fish. That how would you regulate that? You can't regulate that. For every single different lake, it could be a different time. It could be a matter of five well, minutes to an hour when the different it, that you wouldn't be able to even regulate. Walleyes, that. Like you were just talking about, you can't regulate that, but you do it based on historical data on when those fish do spawn. Yeah, but across the state. I don't know. I don't know. I would, if that's what I said, I, I don't know, but I, I would make it so you can only catch and release when walleyes are spawning. But then again, it's no different than rainy river. Then you can go up and catch and release up there when they're prime spawning in the river. Exactly. Same fo Fox river in green Bay. Same thing. Mm -hmm. But then you just go um, back oh, to a Michigan. straight catch and release season. Yeah. You catch and release for this certain amount of time. For crappies, it's April 1st till May 9th this year, and then you can start keeping them again. I don't see it that that's – I don't know how that would be too, a big issue. Because the other thing, too, is you also have walleye season ending uh, besides Lake, uh, Lake of the Woods and that, but at the end of February, and then you have people going out for – crappie fishing after so if you were to just go to a catch and release system then i you mean go you, catch and release you can still target on walleyes you can't even target walleyes that's the thing is because there's no se the season's closed 100 percent. it's not catch and release for crappies i can go right now on one of these lakes go in three feet of water and reeds and, and catch a few crappies because they're moving up and i can keep every single one when they're all 13 14 inches When yeah, I, I know I don't I'm know. not it's, going to do that, but it's it's a fine line between if we we want to protect the resource as much as possible. That's the main thing, especially with higher and higher pressure every single year. Yes, that's which isn't a bad thing. I agree, people should be getting out fishing. Oh no, no, that's but being not, able to manage that's another thing. That's not, I think DNR is doing a good job. I just think the panfish one needs to be looked at again. Yeah, especially I, since like the lakes around the Virginia area, and maybe people know where to catch big crappies around here but from what my experience going out over the last probably three or four years i could they're all stunted all crappies all of them i, I can't even i don't know where to catch big crappies around here maybe you guys know if you do let me know i guess but i don't know where they're all they're all stunted fish see i don't even know if i really uh but possession limit really should be changed but more or less a slot limit on them because you have people catching potato chip six seven inches taking 10 of those home every day i Maybe mean that's really cool, yeah. because 
because really what brings up this issue Noah what what's really your underlying problem is it the number of fish because I mean the DNR does all their studies on big lakes every year and you think that they would raise concern but they're real I mean people are targeting walleye I think so it's more or less it's probably more on the fish size is what I'm getting at yes yeah, so I would I would propose like a slot limit because I mean, you can only keep crappies between eight and 12 inches or something like that because, I mean, people keep in six, seven inches, obviously you're gonna get stunted ones. You go up to some places up by the border that I know of that I know some people fly into and you don't keep anything less than 14 because you can't catch anything less than 14. So, I mean, 14 inch crappies are tiny for where they're fishing. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, but then if you were to say, okay, for example, Lake X, okay, has 14 inch crappies everywhere and that's all you can catch, okay. Well, then if the DNR says, okay, well, we'll make it a special exemption for Lake X, then everybody's going to go, oh my God, there's giant crappies in there and then they're going to go fish it out. It's not. I don't think it's any different than special regulations for any other lake, though. Like Vermilion's got yeah. four walleye limit. Okay, uh, well everybody knows that Vermilion is just. Oh, that's that's the one that comes to mind. But there's a they have the whole fifteen pages in the back of the book that has special regulations for each species in each lake. If it if it's on there, anyways. But yeah, I think that going off the whole size thing, I think that they shouldn't keep like the super small ones either. I don't think. I don't think they should keep the super big end of the spectrum, but I don't think that they should keep the super small end of the spectrum either because from my experience, the smaller the fish is, the harder it is to flay. For sure. And if I'm flaying some potato chip five inch crappie, I don't know. I mean, there's no way you can get any substance off of that fish and it's just wasted. So, I mean, it can go both ways. So I, I think that the possession limit, I think that would be the hardest to change. I think the possession limit piece of this whole entire thing would be the, by far the hardest to change in the state of Minnesota. But I think if you implemented a slot between uh, eight inches and 12 inches or eight inches and 13 inches or something like that, I think that could be more easily implemented in today's fishing uh yeah. society i guess mm -hmm. and i don't see, see i'm, I'm not trying I'm, to... i disagree with that so because like garrett said there's going to be how many lakes where you can't catch anything but those 13 plus lakes so wouldn't it just be easier to just say hey instead of keeping 10 crappies like you used to you can only keep six now i would say you have to do either one you do either possession limit or put a slot limit on it i, I think mean, you do both i think you do both. You do i think you do both personally that that's just me though that, okay, so if you were to do both how would you pitch it to the public or how would you get support for it i mean I, it's like it's all about I, protecting I, I, a resource yeah i don't see why you need any support on it anyways yeah. look at mille Lacs. they cut the they tell you you're not keeping any fish out of Mille Lacs and I mean, you can't do anything about it. I don't, I just think that's a tall order to do both of them. I think one of them. I, well, I, 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 I don't, don't think, think the crappie resources that is horrible. Right? I mean, it's going to, it's in a good place. If you ask me, it's just the quality of fish isn't there in my mind. Yeah. And, and I don't think, of lakes I, I don't think you should implement both at once either. I should clarify that. I think you should implement one. So let's just say we did, the slot size first and if that doesn't make a big enough impact then implement the other one but try one first to see if one of them is enough but that i agree with more than putting both in yeah i wouldn't put in both right away no no so i guess that kind of segues into our next topic of bluegills so you you guys said that there was i to be honest i didn't even know what the limit was on bluegills because i I've never thought i don't know either it it it's Something stupid high, but I don't. I don't disagree. It, it's a lot. 
What is it, 20? You have a pull. Garrett says it's 20. Okay. So 20 bluegills, which there's a lot of bluegills in a lot of lakes, but there's a lot of ones that are about this big. There's none of the the pie plates anymore. And that's where I'm getting at. I could I could tell you in my head two lakes where I could go and catch one over nine and a half inches right now. But that's I would a, see that as like how many people target bluegills to keep bluegills? You'd be surprised. You'd be very, very, no, you'd be I very think it's a very small portion. No, not surprised. if you go south. But not you'd you, be very, you very south? surprised. Okay. The, the range is a very bad exp explanation because there's not a yeah. lot of quality blue. But the thing is, is you're not fishing to the south, so your, I mean, your reasoning doesn't make any sense. Oh, here the people all by me. I'm in Otter Tail County right now. A lot of people target bluegills up by Bemidji. A lot of people target bluegills. So, <laughs> speaking about a local lake, Jared and, I, Jared and I, and Garrett, I guess, and when Noah used to live around here, we used to fish Ely Lake for crappies all the time. All the time. And we could never ever find big ones. Okay. So this is just a thought. What about if because because on on the Iron Range, I know that not very many people target bluegills. I think that's safe to say. Yep. Um, yeah, I can agree with that. So if nobody really targets bluegills and we a bunch of people go to Ely Lake to fish crappies, okay, catch your crappies, go home. Okay. So now there's less crappies and more bluegill. And there's a problem that Jared was talking about as how, oh, the crappies in that lake are stunted. Well, I mean, if nobody tries to control the bluegill population and people catch the crappie population, the bluegill population is only going to get higher, which then takes out resources for the crappie. I agree. I agree. I, agree. I don't think, the, I don't think uh, bluegill possession limit should change. I think that's fine the slot a, a size of no minimum but a max on on, on bluegills sh in my mind should be implemented because you can't find a bluegill now over nine and a half inches you can't so, find that that gorgeous 10 inch pipe plate anymore you, you're very lucky you have to be very good and know the lake really well what do you suppose is a solution what size limit eight nine that seems too small nine okay Okay. Nine and under. I would say that we're pretty <laughs> kind of bad on this topic, though, because, I mean, I only recall in the probably the five, six years I've been ice fishing, only targeting bluegills twice. And, I mean, from a personal perspective, I don't have a good grasp on what the bluegill population is in different lakes around here. And, I mean, I mean we don't target them. Noah definitely ha would have the most experience because of where he's working now. I target I targeted them quite a bit last summer, and even fishing them. I went down and I fished them in Illinois this winter, bluegills and crappies, and we didn't catch a bluegill over seven inches. Granted, that's Illinois, and it's a pretty popular lake. We didn't catch one over seven inches, and then even hearing like one person I know that fishes bluegills a lot in the fishing industry is Joel Nelson, and he'll say. The same thing on it's extremely, extremely hard to find a 10 inch bluegill right now. And he, and he is a big proponent on conservation for bluegills and, and panfish in general. And that kind of reminds me because I don't know if uh, the viewers right now have ever watched 39 Hours, but I know that Eric Hadia and Alex Perrick tried to catch a 10 inch bluegill for like two days, three episodes or something yeah. ridiculous, and they never it, caught one. Nope. I think they got a nine. Uh, they might have got a nine and a half if they if they were lucky. And I mean, they're really good fishermen. Like they know what they're doing. But and they didn't. They never caught a ten incher. No. Granted, that was Wisconsin. Yeah, it was Wisconsin. So south in eastern Wisconsin, but they still never caught a ten incher. Granted, I think you can find some little lakes in the middle of nowhere in Minnesota where you can find them now, but or go up to Canada. But there's more populated lakes you aren't going to find a 10 inch speaking of wisconsin correct me if i'm wrong on this isn't the crappie limit there 25 am i am i crazy on that i don't oh, know look, it up. Garrett, look, look it, up. it up look it up garrett i feel like i remember hearing that somewhere that's yeah. that's absurd me I and mean, i guess i've only fished wisconsin once in my life so pan, all pan fish are 25 
Holy jeez. 25 crappies a person? And we're talking about dropping it to eight here. Myself. <laughs> Maybe we'll have to start go and fish panfish more over there, I guess. But Well, see, that, that's oh, one man. of the problems. Like, what if we lower our limit and then everybody goes, oh, well, what the heck, that's stupid. Look over our sister state, Wisconsin, an hour and a half away. Oh, my God, you can catch 25. And just go boot right over there and catch all their fish and then come back over here. Well, they should protect their resources a little better. That's what I'm talking about, protecting resources. <laughs> I don't know about that. I think, I think the possession limits, I have to think about it more, is fine. I think it's more of the slot and the quality of the fish. That's, that's more of what's on the forefront of my mind, is the quality of both, pan, both bluegills and, and crappies. I agree. And that's a tough one. I, I, I do believe the DNR has looked at it before, but we're seeing it more and more now where you're not seeing quality fish. I mean, I caught my first 14-inch crappie this year. I caught two of them in the same day because the lake hadn't been touched in a while. And I caught two of them this year the first time in years. I've seen one over 12 13. I caught one 13 the other day, or the other year, summer. But I, 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 I look at it and, like, yeah, I, I agree with you guys on there should be a slot too. But honestly, in my mind, it's, it's, the, it's the limit. It's the amount of fish. I don't think there's any reason you should keep let alone if it's 10 crappies, I think should be cut to six and 20 bluegills, 20 least, fish a person. It, you have to look at how many of the eggs they spawn and how many of those fish live too. Okay. I, I understand that. But but they're constantly a person? reproducing faster and faster. Holy. I mean, that's a lot. That's a lot of fish. I mean, I think the way, cause Garrett and I were talking about this cause I ran down to Garrett's house today and I just thinking about it, we were like, okay, well, we thought that the DNR might base the number of um, the number of fish that you can keep on the average family size of being four. And okay, you could, so for instance, what's the walleye limit on any uh, any lake in Minnesota is is six with one over twenty. Okay, six with one over twenty. Okay, so say that you caught one twenty and five fifteen inches good day okay it's a good day that could feed more than a family of four probably yeah it'd probably be two two maybe three meals yeah well, so maybe i think i think they're trying to go off the fact of feeding a family of four ten bluegills probably can feed a family of four now the bluegill one or excuse me, did I say bluegills on the last yeah, one? Yeah, you meant 10 crappies. Okay, so 10 oh, crappies. Sorry, 10 crappies. Probably could feed a family of four. 20 bluegills. That one I'm not super fond of, but I mean. But it's 20 north. bluegills. Yeah, so what's the uh, northern? What's the northern limit? Two? Depends on where you're at in the state. We have the northeast zone, the north central zone, and then the southeast zone or south zone or whatever they call it. One of them, one of them, they just recently changed. You can keep quite a few of them. One's like 10, 10 pike under 26. 24 inches and one over. One's three pike between 22 and 30. And the other one, I don't even know what the south one is. But they were, it changed it two years ago, three years ago now for something like that. I don't well, know. In the last five years, and I don't, I don't target them enough. I don't keep them enough to even look at it that often. Yes, thinking about it, if you put it into perspective of feeding a family of four, it changes a lot of them. Like, then the crappie numbers seem justifiable. Uh, the walleye numbers seem justifiable. And then the bluegills don't seem justifiable. I mean, you don't need 20. That's five bluegills a person. Yeah, that's 40 flays. That's 10 flays a person. I mean, I... Quite a bit. Depends on how big your fish are, though, too. Which would then constitute the size limit. I don't know. The main talking point behind this and the reason I want to talk about it is just the quality of fish we're seeing in the state. I think it comes down to common sense more than anything. It just, it you don't need, if, you have, if you have a bunch of fish in your freezer, you don't need to be keeping more fish if you're fishing every day. I mean, a lot of people just look at it as like, I mean, I've, I mean, we consider it a sport, so we're not out there to keep fish every single time we go out. I mean, if more people adapted to that mentality instead of 
oh, I got to go out there every day and catch my own limit. I mean, unless you're eating them, then good for you, but. I know, but I think. I'm going to piggyback off of that, too, unless you have something else real quick to say. I was go just, just going to say super quick that I think it's also a problem because there's people that will go to a lake every single, single day. day and catch their limit, bring it home, and maybe they do eat it. Maybe they do eat it, and good for them. Like, like whatever. But I think it's a problem when you go there every day and catch your limit. So just for every example, day. if you go to one lake three times a week and catch your limit every single time. Okay. Crappies, fish and crappies. Yep, the summer. Okay, there's roughly four uh, weeks in a month. Okay. So 10 times 3 is 30, times 4 is 120. That's 120 fish per month times May, June, July, August, September, probably October. So 6 times 140 is like 800-something fish. 840 fish. It's a lot of fish. That's way more than you would ever need. I know there's a couple of lakes we had gone, we had went to up when I was up with you guys. You'd see the same person at the dock every single day. And we go out there just for fun. We'd bass fish one day. We'd copy fish and not keep them the next day. We'd go target walleyes the next day. They were sitting on the same exact crappie spot every single day with three or four people in their, in their boat. And, that, and you know darn well they're keeping 20, at least 20 copies every day. Yeah, well, well that's the point. That's the point is that, 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 like, that's the main point is that you found your fish. Congratulations for one. It's not always easy, but you found them. Well, go keep your limit for you to eat, and then you have to. You should be starting to release fish. And yeah, that's kind of a mentality thing too. And well, I think that, today's world is changing that. There's a lot of people in today's world that are changing more to the conservation catch and release, but there's still people that are every fish I catch that's needed, I'm keeping because maybe I don't get out that often and I'm still going to keep every fish or I get out and I, I'm keeping fish. It's just what I've known and how I've grown up. I'm going to pick up my dad a little bit. He, he's like that every once in a while, unless I'm fishing with him and I poke at him a little bit. But he grew up where he'd go out and he'd, every fish he'd catch, he'd, he'd keep. That was within a certain size. I mean, if it was in the slot, put it that way, he's keeping it. That was also the back of the day when you kind of cooked, though. <laughs> exactly, and it's changing. More pressure, more people fishing, more fish being taken out of the lake. But then you got to switch with that where if you don't need it, throw it back, in my mind. Or, and that's, and or, that's, or it's going to lead to tighter regulations, and then people are going to get real mad. Yeah, and that's, that was the main reason. <clears throat> we talk, we've been talking about kind of different topics we want to talk about. That was the main reason I wanted to talk about this one because, I mean, realistically, you guys, what's the chances of them switching the panfish regulations? Very, very low. Very slim. Unless something drastic happens within the state. So it's pretty slim. But the main reason I want to talk about it was to try to at least sort of change the mentality of starting to let fish go when you have enough in your freezer. And, and I'll admit, I used to kind of be that way. I used to catch and keep a lot of fish. I mean, granted, I was, had a family of five back then with my mom, my dad, my brother, and my sister all living here. So it was a little bit different. But, I mean, I've kind of changed to where, thanks to you guys, you've kind of shaped me into more catching and releasing fish now. So, I don't know. I, the chances of the DNR changing something in the state, in my opinion, are very, very low. But if we can change 10 people's opinion with this podcast into starting to release fish, I think that was my goal of it. That makes sense. 100% makes sense. We've definitely adapted to it, to our videos and stuff. So, I mean. And yeah, don't I get us wrong. Doing... We keep fish and we eat a oh, lot of fish. 100%. We eat fish. We eat fish quite a bit. Don't, so don't get us wrong. More, we, we don't eat more than we can handle either. So. Yeah. I love fish. I might make some this weekend. How long are we at here, Noah? How, what, what kind of time? 35 are we? minutes. We're sitting at 34 minutes and 30 seconds. All right, let's talk about one more topic. Oh, I, got, I got two. I got two. Well, two? it's kind of one bottled into two. Well, let, two me, let, me, into one. let me talk about it, and maybe it's the same thing you, are, you have. Uh, I'm guessing it is because we talked about it last night, and that's about them closing the fishing season on Mille Lacs during the month of July. Yeah, I was going to say, Mille Lacs, 
fishing regulations. I don't know if Crofty and Gary, you guys are familiar with this a little bit. I talked to Jerry about it, so he, I don't know. But you can, this summer, walleye fishing on Mille Lacs is catch and release only, and you can't fish during the month of July. There's no walleye fishing month of July. I don't know if you guys told me, or maybe it was on Target Walleye uh, that I'm subscribed to. If you're not subscribed to Target Walleye, you definitely sweet. have really cool stuff in that thing. I just watched it. I just um, read it today. But I heard of guides on Mille Lacs because the main reason why that they're ban banning fishing in July is that in Mille Lacs Lake, uh, when it's post spawn, all these big fish that are getting bigger and bigger due to the fact that they're not uh, allowing people to keep any walleyes, they're pushing down into the deeper mud flats and they're basically just meandering, meandering around down there eating bugs, you know, whatever. So the main reason that they're banning it is because in the months of July and August, mainly July, when these fish are super deep, they would be caught and reeled in so quickly that they would not be able to be released. They would basically just die. So the temps are super, super warm and they're coming from 35 feet in the water. Yeah, so then there, all these fish, if, if you could keep them, it's a different story, but since you couldn't keep them, all of them are dying. So then there's no point in having the catch and release thing so now they're deciding to completely uh, close, just cut, cut out the whole month of July so you can't keep any fish. And I think it's a really good idea. I think it's a great idea too. And then I think a second part to why it's happening is because of how much fishing pressure there was this past winter on that lake. There was, we had such a horrible winter with water and slush and just ice quality. I mean, the ice was fine, but the amount of water and snow on the ice was ridiculous this year. Mm -hmm. And I didn't even want to go fishing at the time. And that's that says unheard. a lot. <laughs> yeah, it says a lot. And if I didn't even want to go fishing. But Mille Lacs was one that was that was open and, and doing well. Lake of the Woods, Red Lake. And there you have it. Unless you have a snowmobile and you don't mind dealing with slush, um, you're not fishing any other lake that, other than those three, pretty much. Unless you have someone where you blow it out yourself or whatever. But those ones saw an increase of pressure, and that's kind of where I wanted to bottle the two and the one. Let's talk about Lake of the Woods, too. Red, I haven't gotten there since early ice, so I, I'm not too familiar with it unless you guys are. They got shut down early this year, too, because of uh, water and slush. Yeah, it was yeah. terrible conditions. It wasn't even really fishable. Yeah. No, so Lake they all of the shut Woods down end really of July then. or yeah. January. Yeah, so – like on, on this target wall, I think I saw that there was fishing guides that would not go out to the mud flats because they were killing so many fish. I got a buddy of mine who fish, who's a guide out there. And he said, he was telling me they were catching, having 90 fish days in July last year. And he said he felt bad fishing out that deep because fish were dying. He said he stopped fishing about halfway through July out in that deep of water. He was targeting 22 feet of water after that. Yeah, that's crazy. But he was still, they were having 90 fish days because the fish were just popping off. And he's like, we can't do anything about it because we can't keep these fish. Which, I agree, they shouldn't be able to keep them. You're catching that many fish. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. It's a, it's a big mess down there, but it's building the lake back to what, for how much pressure that lake gets, it's crazy, too. Mille Lacs well, is a prime thing. example. Huh? Go ahead, Garrett. Uh, Mille Lacs is a prime example of what I think uh weaker conservation happened i mean Mille Lacs has turned into a desperate lake that needs to be rebuilt and the uh, i mean they're taking drastic measures these last three four years to get it back and i mean that's why kind of what we talked about the crappie population and bluegill population i mean eventually it could turn into something like Mille Lacs and i mean you're gonna have to take drastic measures and resorts are gonna suffer i mean there's not a whole lot of resorts on like big crappie lakes or stuff like that, but I mean, your resorts are targeting walleyes, but you still have these resorts that are going to hurt from it. So they're better <laughs> off taking drastic or like more uh, cautious measures beforehand than dealing with shutting down fishing for a whole month, especially well, in the month of July. It's no that's different a prime example. I was just going to say it's a prime example of the red lake crappie population. 
Red I've Lake never been my, that. Red Lake before that, but that. That Red Lake crappies. Water. Red Lake crappies. I've never caught one, ever. I might have they caught used, one when I was young. My dad used to go up there, and they'd limit in like an hour, if not a half hour, and then they'd oh, just go fish walleye. Yeah, on big crappies. Now, I mean, now they're nowhere to be found. The part with that, though, is this year a lot of people on the north side of Red Lake were catching them. They were. They're, they're going to make their comeback, but so, they were depleted. Yeah. Compl- they were gone, literally gone. They, there's helicopter images out there where you can see a black cloud in Red Lake and they're all crappies in the summer dome. I mean, my dad was telling me stories. They'd go up there. It was two hours away from him when he was growing or when he was, I don't know, how old he was when he was growing up there, when that copy boom was happening. They'd go up there in the morning. They'd catch their 20 fish between two guys. They'd come home. They'd drop them off. Two other guys would clean them, and they'd go back up there and catch 20 more. <laughs> He'd bring home 40 fish between two guys a day. And I was like, there was, it was that good. He said it was ridiculous because they were all big fish, too. There was nothing small. And I was like, well, you just think you were doing that. How many other people were doing something like that? And there goes, yeah. can, there goes Red Lake. Can you- can you imagine the people that lived somewhat close? Oh, the people yeah. that lived within a half hour and say they had a family of six with all fishing licenses. Well, two of them go get two limits and they come back and then they go back again and go back and go back again and go back. <laughs> I mean, what? like, holy hell. I just I, think you, that I, I, I think the, the Red Lake popul, uh, crappie population is a really good example. And I think that the precautions that Malax previously did to manage their walleye population was bad obviously because why the heck would they be doing all this restructuring now if it wasn't absolutely horrible a couple years ago but i think what they're doing now is the right thing to do in order to get the lake back to its former glory i agree oh and it's on its way back yeah well definitely it's it's, it's oh it's on its way it's doing there's big people are catching big fish out there but it's just Catch the numbers the anymore. Numbers. Yeah, the eater, the eaters. Oh, the, I just heard about normally big fish, but I, I don't know. I think they did. Well, like they're trying to bring a lot of those eater fish back too. Yeah, yeah right like, now they have a lot of doing, big fish and not eaters. Yeah, well, now they're taking the right steps to try to bring this back into the fishery that it should be. Because go, Jared. Sorry. Well, I was just gonna say, like, typically, I guess. For the people on the northern side of the state, you either go to Red or Lake of the Woods. Well, there's only truly one of those in the southern part, and that's Mille Lacs. So it gets absolutely pounded. So, I mean, it's hard to, to it's regulate It's a hour and a half jaunt from everybody from the cities to come up to, yeah. the, or to Mille Lacs instead of four or five hours. Like it was. When this whole thing is said and done with the whole Mille Lacs thing, and then they say, okay, we're going to open it back to regular conventional fishing. I still think that the walleye limit should be less than two, two or less. I don't think it should be any more. It'll take a back up to four or something like that. I agree with they should step it up at least a two for five years or so, and then back up to four or whatever. But now everybody knows that there's giant fish in Mille Lacs because they haven't been targeted and you can't keep them. Okay, so because of that fact. Everybody's going to want to go there, and if, the, if it's four, you can keep four a guy, well, then they're just going to fish it out again. So I think that it should be – It's going to be a very watched closely – a lake that's going to be watched closely. Yeah, they're not, going to let, they're not going to let that happen again, what happened to it. There's no, no way. Well, and the biggest problem they're having now, though, is the resorts are getting mad because, I mean, the resorts have to make money. And that's the biggest thing. Yeah, right fish now. to be able to catch fish. Exactly. So I was watching some back when I was on the news, I think last fall, a bunch of resort owners were mad and stuff that they're gonna cancel fishing. Well, it's like, yeah, I understand that, you know, you're not gonna make money as much money now closing the fishing season because that's what brings you up to Malak. Big economic impact for sure. I mean but, I mean, you're going to have these times where if it wasn't well managed before, it will be now for sure. I guarantee it. <laughs> yeah, it will be now. So, kind of, what do you think of 
Lake of the Woods then because they saw a huge increase of pressure this year. And if red was as bad as what you guys were saying and kind of got shut down early, Lake of the Woods got hammered this year. And no one's going to deny it got hammered. Lake of the Woods a couple of years ago when we started going up there, it was fantastic. You know, you'd either – Ridiculous, 75 fish days every time you went. And now we're having 20 fish days. Mm-hmm. Well, it's, well, I think I, that's the point is they, they took that step this year and they decreased the winter limit to six. They did, and then it got hurt, hit even harder than they were expecting because of the, the ice conditions everywhere else in the state. It was one of the two bodies of water that you could get on and consistently fish. I think six I, is too much. I still think it should be four. I mean, yes, you have the people that come up from the cities and want to keep bring back – you know, as many fish as they can because they're not going to do the trip as much. But I personally, and I think for all of us, if you can go up there and catch 100 fish plus a day per group, that's a lot more fun than bringing home eight fish. Well, look at the quality of the fish coming out of there too right yeah. now. I mean, yeah, right yeah. now you're you're lucky if you catch 12-inch pail with fish. Well, that's that's the thing I was going to ask you guys. What do you think? They, sh- they should put a, a slot on saugers then. Well, I don't think saugers are really – well, a minimum, but not I – mean, I don't know. It's tough to place a minimum if, because on that, especially on that body of water because you're fishing deeper. It's the same issue. Yeah. Yeah, I guess you're running into I that. I think it should just be – I think it should just be brought down to four total with a max of four walleyes. Well, yeah, yeah so you can imagine. still keep all four walleyes? I yeah. I think the biggest yeah. thing has changed is the evolution of the portable ice house where you can take ice castles out and stay out there for a week. That's where I think that the whole idea of Lake of the Woods isn't now a day trip anymore or like maybe two or three nights. It's like a week thing. Yeah, it's a day trip for close people, but that's about it. Yeah, and I just don't – I think that because it's now not viewed as a day trip thing, at least for us – I mean, obviously southern Minnesota is going to be different, but – where we see it, we see it as a day trip, but with how the ice castles and yetis and all, how they have been developing, it's not a day trip anymore. It's four, five, six, a week long. I mean, and I, I think- mean, how many, When you go up there, how many portables do you see on the lake versus ice castles? Exactly. Houses? Exactly. So that's I, saw- I think that the whole, idea of lake of the woods is getting construed and that the walleye limit should be brought down from six to four good stuff and maybe this rainy river shutting down this year is going to help that i don't know if it truly is or not because i don't know how i think those fish do fine in the river in the spring still most of them 95 percent of them but it's still it'll still help and i don't know that body of water is, is interesting because you'd be able to go up there and catch 16-inch walleyes all day long, and now you can go up there and catch 5, 10, 12, 12-inch saugers, two, if you're lucky, 15-inch walleyes, one 13-inch walleye. And a bourbon. And, and a, bourbon. Bourbon, bourbon if you're super lucky, because I haven't done it yet up there, uh, and a couple tulies because they run rampant. Well, I think a good thing with that whole Rainy River situation, too, is – I mean, we would see it right when we'd start fishing early April or so. You'd be pulling them up, and their mouths would be for late March, early April in there. And you'd, their mouths would be just pristine, and then you get towards the end of April, and every you can tell the fish have been taking a beating with, all the, with how their mouths are looking too. So I think, I mean, the quality of fish, I think, will be higher this year or in the next couple of years too. I agree. I agree. But – I mean, it, it just sucks because it's just catch and release anyways, but, I mean, I, I mean, it's overall, it's, if you don't catch fish, obviously, they're going to have time to produce more and get better quality. Mm-hmm. But, I'm sure we wrap this, wrap this one up. Else? Yeah, unless anyone else, anything else on regulations, like the woods, Malax, panfish, if we forgot anything, anybody have any last final thoughts? Oh, I have a big one, but it's too big. That's okay. If it's on regulations, fire away. 
more than one rod, two rods. Oh, I think one rod. And unless for lake trout, I think the only thing you can get away with is it with lake trout there because, I mean, you got two hands and you need two hands to reel with, with a rod. I mean, I realize we're like the only state that has a one rod limit in the summer. Yeah. I mean, Wisconsin, well, you can fish three. Okay, but I, I'm also to the point of if you're going to, we're talking about regulating how many fish you can catch and stuff like that. I mean, if you can catch, you're, you're with one keep, rod. Not catch, keep. Even still catching, I mean, you're going to, the more fish you catch, the more stress you're putting on more fish and stuff like that. I mean, if you, if you have one rod, say one rod catches 20 fish, 20 crappies or 20 walleyes a day, you go to two rods and you, I oh mean, if you could double your fishing to 40 then, that's more, 40 more or 20 more fish you're impacting. Yeah. I, I, I don't want to. I think only the only thing you can get away with is lake trout. I think lake trout you should be able to. Trolling but, uh, or well, you yeah. can on Lake Superior. You can use yeah, two on Lake Superior. Yeah. Okay. So, but I'm saying inland lakes. I think. Okay. So, but like my defense to that would be like, what about if you're using planer boards for walleyes? Or I just bought two downriggers today. I mean, so like, I can so like only use one the, if I buy myself. Okay. I think the main concern, okay, so when you're bass fishing, you're not going to use two rods. You can't even, you, you can't, can't do, even it. do it. So in some instances, obviously there's exceptions for bass fishing. You're not going to musky fish with two rods. I mean, you can just. Well, can't. you can. You can drag a sucker behind you. Okay. Why well, does Wisconsin well, do that? Okay. Besides that, okay. I think the main concern that they have is that in nine times out of ten when you're fishing two rods, Besides trolling, besides trolling, we're not getting in trolling. It's a bobber rod. Bobber. Or jigging. Okay. You, you could, could probably jig two rods. You could jig could two rods. Jigging rod, yes. But, like, you have one casting and one that's sitting 20 feet off the side of the boat. Okay? And the thought is that since it's a bobber rod, people tend to forget about their bobber rod. I mean, ice fishing, I mean – I guess in my personal opinion or in, in my personal experiences, I tend to not watch my uh, bobber rod because I'm paying attention to my Vexilar. I mean, it, it's just. Well, I think that brings up a different point too is between ice fishing and summer fishing. Summer fishing, I think it should be one, but ice fishing, I mean, I could see adapting like uh, North Dakota and having three because you have they one. have four in North Dakota. Oh, four? Mm -hmm. Oh, well. I could see having, you know, three ice fishing. You have a dead stick right next to you, a jigging stick, and then you have a tip-up boat. I could understand that. Oh, okay, so where I argue that is, what's the difference? You're covering bobber, more area when you're able to go with a boat, I would think. Well, okay, okay, let, let me finish my thought. Okay, so you have your one casting rod, and you have your one bobber rod sitting 20 yards out from the boat. Because you're paying so much attention to your casting rod, you tend to lose track of your bobber rod. So you're paying a lot of attention to this, your, your rod, and you get a walleye on your bobber rod that digests the hook that's outside of the slot. Okay, so you catch the fish, okay, 23 inches long. Prime breeding fish for a walleye. Okay? Now, because you can't keep that walleye, you have to let it go. So then you're going to try to fiddle with that hook that's stuck in its gullet. You should cut it at that point. It. should cut it at that point. But well, you, you should, you but should. how many people do? Exactly. True. So they're going to mess around. You got to a $5 rip and wrap down there. Are you going to leave it? <laughs> or a jig and wrap? Well, okay. that's, that's why I'm saying bobber rod. But that's beside the point. So then this fish is dying because you didn't pay attention to your rod. I mean, it, when it comes to trolling, I think you should be able to have two. In my personal opinion, I think you should be able to have two trolling. Uh, but then they're catching crappies in two feet. You should probably only have one. Okay, Crafty. So I have a question for you then. What do you define specifically as trolling? So can I sit there off the side of my boat and hold one rod in each hand? Or are you talking specifically downriggers and planter boards? Well, I mean, you don't need... You can't regulate it that way. 
Okay, down ring, okay, down ringers are a little bit different, but planer boards are essentially the same thing as holding your rod out to the side of the boat. It's just that instead of th three, but you have to you have to be moving for third. sure. So I mean, that's a, that's I what I'm getting at is is that it would be too hard to regulate it. I think you could regulate it per lake though, if you wanted to do two rods on Lake of the Woods and Red Lake and Malax. I mean, you could go that way. I mean. You're not really going to be, or Lake Vermilion too, I guess, could be part of it. But you're not going to be trolling Ely Lake with planer boards. I mean. Crofty and I tried. Me. Yeah, I mean. Watch why, me. Why not? Why not? The average Joe out there is not going to be going out there with planer boards <laughs> on Ely Lake. I have seen people other than Jared and I fish <laughs> with planer boards on Ely Lake. Swear to God. There's big walleyes. How about the sucker bite out there this year? Are we doing that? We could go sucker spearing out by the uh, – uh, Sorry, completely off topic. East side of the lake, right where that oh, river goes out. I was there that one day. I was I'll in never forget the day no one I fall knows. I'll never nope. forget it. 2,000 on easy. They go by that airport every, all, every single year. There's, it's black, uh, and you could literally just toss a spear into the water or a uh, pole punch. Anything. Mm, that'd be fun. Bow fishing. Oh. Bow fishing would be cool. Yeah. All right. Well, can we wrap this thing up, guys? Yeah. Does anybody have? I didn't really say anything on one rod versus two because I don't know where I stand. I I, I, I like having one rod and only being able to use one. But yeah, I would like to go out with downriggers with two rods for sure. Mm -hmm. And planer. Yeah. And leg core. See, I agree with you there. I just go down to the point of what's reasonable. Four rods out on, out in North Dakota. I mean, that's crazy. I it, couldn't keep track of five make, rods if I had four tip ups. I could. I couldn't do it. It doesn't make any sense to me. I mean, two rods on ice and one rod in the winter. I think or is summer. I think that makes the most sense. And if we're talking about trying to cut down regulations and stuff, I mean, I mean, Gary and I, we fished Green Bay one time, and it's three rods a person there. We only fish five rods. Well, and that was hectic. <laughs> it was hectic. It was, it was very hectic. That was awful. That was fun, but dumped the boat. But that was a different story. Yeah, story got, for another time. Got a bath inside the boat. Here to get a bath that day. I had well, a I'm shoes. very glad. I'm very glad I didn't go on that trip. Yeah, you you would have been. And you then, had brown pants after that one. <laughs> no, and I had like a three-hour boat ride back, and then finally we get back. Six-foot waves in a sixteen-foot boat. We get back to the hotel and pull in and just started downpouring. Yeah, good hey. thing we got out, out before the rain. He was he had a shower before the rain. Let's put All it right. this way. I will never, ever be as scared as when I drop my dad's boat off trailer. <laughs> ever. Oh, that's so funny. We'll, we'll, we'll tell that story a different Garrett time. Garrett and I ran aground on Ely Lake talking to my dad on the phone. <laughs> We're I wasn't as, we I wasn't as that scared. One. We should do that one next. The next well, one I think one. now our viewers know that we got some interesting stories. We coming. have some <laughs> funny stories we need to tell. Maybe that, maybe, maybe that should be the next one. We'll tell really funny and interesting stories that have happened to us because Lord knows we have a ton of them. Just, we have a lot. We have a lot. Huh. So, but that'll wrap up this uh, episode on regulations. Uh, if you have any questions or comments on regulations, I'm sure everybody's got their own opinion because we all, all four of us had different opinions on one thing or another. Mm -hmm. um, everyone has their own opinion on what they should be depending upon what you do and what your experiences are but with that we'll wrap this one up and we'll see you on the next one Keep it I'd like to say one thing oh I'm say boy one thing. All right. hey, I, hey it's a serious thing alright like I always say not what I always say but I said it during the last one because this is our second podcast uh, coronavirus is going around stay healthy stay safe and most importantly, keep her tuned. Keep her tuned. Keep her tuned. Cheers, everyone. You destroyed my ending.